Hello Skippers, something a little bit different this week. I interviewed the founder of Wild Wi-Fi, a co-living in the southwest of Africa in Windhoek, the capital of Namibia. In the interview, we talk about some really interesting facts about the capital, as well as the adventures you can get on and how the locals welcome nomads. I hope you enjoy the interview. Christine, thank you so much for catching up with us today. I really appreciate your time. You are the founder of Wild Wi-Fi. I have also done some stalking on you online. You're also an amazing photographer. I've been checking out your portfolio. Um, it's such a pleasure to have you. I know that your guys are based down in Namibia. You've been building a co-living there um, for, I think, two or three years. Um, it's an area, I, I, and we've kind of crossed each other's paths a few times, but kind of close, but not close. When I was in Bansko a few years ago um, at Nomad Fest, I remember other people going, oh yeah, there's someone else who's doing co-livings yeah. in Africa. You should, you need to go and speak to them. <laughs> and, yeah, uh, yeah. and we never quite got to meet up, but finally we were kind of catching up online. Um, yeah. So thanks so much. It's really cool to actually meet you on video. Yeah, thanks Duncan for having the chance to uh, again meet online and yeah, not yet in person. We had so many chances, but yeah, it's it's just amazing how people know that there are these few co-livings across Africa and everyone wants to bring us together. So I think it's quite a strong community that we have still since we are like on, always thriving in Africa, but not yet the hotspot. So quite exciting for the future. Yeah, I think Africa is the, I mean, I, I, I mean, obviously both of us have the same opinion because we're both doing similar things on the continent, but I think it's definitely the, the next destination because it, it has a few great things in its favor. It's in the right kind of area for the European time zone. So if you've got a little bit of work to do, then you don't have to do it at like three in the morning. Um, and then it's also, it's just a lot closer, right? It's, you know, instead of if you're flying to, a lot, I know a lot of people who fly quite regularly to uh, Southeast Asia, that's a long flight and, uh, and a lot of time zones and a lot of jet lag. And I can fly up and down to Kenya, it takes me eight hours, I'm guessing it takes you about 10 hours down to Namibia. Right. And, uh, and it, it, it's just like, I mean, it's a long regional flight, um, but you get off the plane, the hours are normal. Uh, it's really, it's really, really great. Um, first, I, I've heard, I, I don't know a huge amount about Namibia. What's it like? Um, I know you guys are in the capital city, but what's the country like? What's the place like? What's the culture like? It's just, uh, it'd be super interesting to hear about that. Yeah, Namibia has these two sides. There's the capital, Windhoek. I mean, this is the only big city where everything happens. And then there's a huge to explore about Namibia and the history and the culture and the country itself. And uh, I think if I would dive into it, we could talk for hours because I have this passion for 13 years where I'm so amazed about all the little details that this country um, delivers. And th there's just facts that blow your mind or that still blow my mind. It's the second least populated country on the planet. So Mongolia is the least populated one and Namibia is if that if someone can put that into relation i'm from germany namibia is like two and a half times the size of germany and it has two million inhabitants wow so, I mean, two million two million people is nothing that's like that's like one or two cities that's like one or two cities so it's so that, that's such a dense population and but this can also give you an idea of what freedom you have once you jump on a badass four by four fully equipped camping car with your roof dead on top with your besties and a fridge and then you just go off road in the middle of nowhere pitch your tent have a little campfire watch the stars and maybe you hear lions roaring in the distance or an elephant is passing this is not a fairy tale that i'm telling you this is things that i experienced in my 13 years namibia travels and this is what caught me and brought me back because I'm a very outdoorsy person already by nature from Germany from my childhood and this is where Namibia really caught my vibe. That sounds amazing and what's what's the safety like one of the, one of the first questions anyone asks me about um, the top two or three is uh, it, for anywhere in Africa I think just because of some of the media perception is is safety what's what's it like in Windhoek I've seen photos of it it looks beautiful it looks like a village yeah 
Vintec has this small town vibe. And as soon as you go out for the same restaurant or karaoke night every Wednesday, you, you meet the same people, but you instantly immerse into the culture and you get these local friends. So besides the safety thing, this is one thing where we are very proud of and which is unique as a nomad destination is that you're not living in this digital nomad bubble like you have maybe in Lisbon or um, I don't know if you're in Mexico City somewhere. Um, but we are here immersed into the local culture. So they hang out with us easily. And about the safety, Vinchuk is also uh, known as one of the cleanest cities in Africa. This is what they were once very proud of. And I've been traveling here for years and I can say it is clean. Every time you walk in the city center, people are like brooming in front of their doors to take every, make everything clean. They are really taking care of the city. They really want to make it um, beautiful and develop. And um, about safety, um, whatever I hear and research and also experience here is Namibia is one of the safest countries in Africa and one of the most easiest to travel as a solo traveler or in a small group with friends on your own, even without a tour guide. So my first safari in 2010 um, was with a tour guide. But after that, I, I immediately feel felt confi uh, com um, confident to book a rental car myself and just go on these road trips myself to the ma main highlight attractions. There's not, sh not such things as hijacking on the road where you get marked. And if you walk in the streets of Vinchuk, there's not, sh not such things as I compare mostly to Cape Town where you always have to watch your shoulder and there might be someone who wants to even harm you when robbing you. But this is a different vibe here in Vintook. I walk in the streets and yes, there's beggars. Yes, there's kids that want to have money. Um, but I always say it in a funny way, like in Vintook, they mug you politely. If you're, if you're not careful with your valuables, they might disappear, but they don't harm you with a knife or whatsoever. So this is at least my experience. So you just have to have this common sense. There are crimes happening. People mock you. If your valuables are open in a car, they might break into your car. But in general, walk around, explore the city, take Ubers, which are called Leffa in Namibia, and you're good to go. And then I guess the next question that everyone always asks me is, what's the infrastructure like for internet? Like you guys have got good fiber internet there. Um, how fast is the 4G on your phone and that kind of thing? And these are really basic questions, but if we get them out of the way now, we can get on to the more interesting stuff. Yeah, so Namibia over the years, it improved with the Wi-Fi. I mean, I was here for an internship t uh, 10 years ago. Um, I was doing an internship in the capital of Inter with a photographer. I'm a photographer myself and um, I was not able to use um, good quality Wi-Fi here at all. Like it was, it was still a pain. And now in the meantime, in our co-living space, for instance, we have 150 Mbit fiber connection, which is stable. There is no load shedding like in Cape Town, no power cuts. Um, I mean, of course, it can drop here and there at some point, but this is not common. This is not something you permanently worry about. And on top, we have this very good 4G connection on your phone and uh, SIM cards with data are super cheap. So uh, you could say three euros per um, three gigabytes. And um, I'm, I'm, really, um, I'm really happy that they go to each district of the city and slowly um, integrate the fiber connection to all the neighborhoods here in Vintook. So you can go to a bunch of coffee shops in the meantime and work easily from a coffee shop. Um, so of course, not every house wants to invest in proper Wi-Fi because it's still expensive, but the ones that invested in good Wi-Fi, uh, in, in good wild Wi-Fi, in good Wi-Fi, then you have a proper connection and you can be sure to work from here.
And what's the what's the wild, what is the wild 4G like? If when you get out of Windhoek and you're out in the wild, what uh, are you able to get online? Because it's a, like you say, it's a huge country. What's the infrastructure like past the city, and where else can you kind of visit in the country if, or trips? And what's where's where's the where's the boundary of uh, of online and offline? So you could easily Google. Um and get a great graphic of this. Like I always like to share this graphic, like if you Google MTC Namibia, and then they show you where in the country they actually have a great connection, where it's a bit lower. Of course, there are, um, like Namibia, Windhoek is in the very center of Namibia. Um, you could picture Namibia, it's a shape like a hand. So this is also a sign everyone does in Namibia. This is the shape of Namibia. So Windhoek is in the very middle and there's tar roads like in a cross main tar roads that connect the little bigger cities that are there, Swakopmund at the coast. Um, and these connections to the bigger cities, there you have a proper 4G connection. But as soon as you go off the beaten paths, as soon as you go on the gravel road, you go into the desert, then you might not have uh, data uh, or reception for a few days. Like we offer also wild camping nights where our um, local tour guys that know every bush and every animal, every rock, they know where we go. So yeah, as soon as you do, go totally off the road and you have a wild camping experience, then you have the digital detox for a few days. But this is also what we really enjoy to have a mix of digital detox. But you can go back to where you have Wi-Fi to proper work from home. One of the things that we were talking about when uh when we were when we were talking earlier this week was the the ratio of guys to girls you you seem to have a uh, a really interesting mix which i wasn't expecting when when you first told me can you tell me more about that yeah so this is the third time we are offering wild wifi starting in january and um this is a upcoming four months retreat and this time it's different to the past two years that i was offering wild wifi so at the moment, we have a higher amount of females joining us. Um, so there's maybe 60, 40 um, to uh, the ratio of that. And I wonder if it is because I'm a female person promoting Africa and maybe there's a lot of female uh, entrepreneurs, digital nomads following me on, uh, naturally. But the, the years before, we were quite a balanced mix. So um, it, of course, it's always nice to have more of a balance. So I'm happy to have more males, and maybe that's also an um, uh, in incentive for some male people to join a big group of ladies. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's great to have a good balance. If it goes too far in the other direction, 60, 40, 40, 60 kind of works quite well. When you start veering the other side, then then it, if it's just for a for a normal retreat, then then it might be challenging. I know uh, six to nine they do. Is it six to nine? I think their their conferences are very female led, which is which I think is great. But um, it's always nice to have a, a reasonable balance. Um, otherwise, it can get difficult. Um, and can you tell me a bit about what what's it like just being in Namibia? So we talked a little bit about what Windhoek's like. What kind of things do people do when they when they come to Namibia? What what do they get up to other than other than obviously taking advantage of the amazing capital? So it's a great mix actually of being in the capital, enjoying the vibe of Windhoek, and um, immersing into the culture here, like getting local friends doing local things, um, but then having the chance to go on little adventures on the weekends. Um, this is all optional, but this is why we are also here. Of course, we want to explore the vastness of Namibia. So um, what we do, we offer frequent weekend getaways each month that you're here. You could join three different weekend getaway types uh, to the Namibian desert, to see the dunes, the oldest desert in the world, to the Tasha National Park, to see the animals and to mountain formations where you can go hiking. So these are just the adventurous, this is the adventurous side of uh, coming to Namibia. And um, if you feel like, hey, I wanna relax, I wanna be in the city, then Windhoek really offers enough activities and things to do um, while you're staying in the city. We have a lot of sports activities. There's a bunch of gyms. People are always surprised that there's like uh, brands like Virgin Active here. But we also have like some small independent local 
uh, gyms that you could support. You could also do some um, giving back uh, charity things. You can help out in the dog shelter. This is what my previous Wawafa people did every week. They went to the dog shelter, walked the dogs. You can go hiking. You can um, do bouldering or mountain biking. And there's also frequent um, traditional live music events or traditional art classes or African dance classes or drum classes. So um, it's really, if you want to get the pure culture uh, experiences, there's enough to do in Bintook if you want to do some sports and if you just want to hang out with locals and your nomad community. Um, it sounds amazing. <laughs> it sounds like it's, it sounds so much more developed than I thought it would be. I was expecting, the only thing I know about Namibia was a little bit about the Namib desert, which is obviously vast. Um, but yes. I didn't realize that the the capital was so so developed. It's, it's, uh, it sounds it sounds really nice. And it's in terms interesting. Of... My, my, yeah. Go on. My mom my mom visited me for the first time last year after me tra traveling here for thirteen years. She came for the first time, and I think in her mind, what her daughter is doing here is every morning she gets out of her little uh, wooden hut, she walks to the next fountain, <laughs> pumps some water. <laughs> Uh, and she only eats weird food here and this is how she barely survives and this is I think the picture that people have that chickens are running around and I have to go pump my water at the well this this is like this if you go into the rural sites this is the traditional life of people living uh, in the rural sites of Namibia but Vintuk is super developed go into your shopping malls go to the cinemas go to clubs and restaurants it's like everywhere else and I guess this is this might sound like a really silly question, but uh, what kind of supermarkets are there? Um, there's a, the big brand spa. I think it's quite known. And um, the funny thing, there is a German history here in Namibia. So it's, it once was a German colony and there's a lot of German influence still. So we have German bakeries, German pharmacies, and you confidently walk into these shops and you talk to these owners in German because you know they repl they speak German so it's a weird thing for Germans to come here um, and the supermarkets kind of look the same like in Germany uh, they are super well equipped um, they have everything you would have in a European supermarket and um, there's an overload of um, offers uh, and you even get all the German <laughs> brands of groceries that you get in German supermarkets of course they are way more expensive because they have to import them but this means whatever you need uh, there's there's no limit yeah I think that's another real weird perception I, I th that story that you mentioned about your your experience with your your mum is exactly the same as mine <laughs> um, <laughs> where 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 they have they have this vision of, of what it might be like and uh, I've just managed to convince my my mum to come and visit us this summer um, but it's been a real battle <laughs> she's uh, you know trying to explain that you know this isn't this isn't the the big jump that you think we don't live in a refugee camp it's you know it's it's still you know it's fairly developed um and so i how do you sign up to wild wi-fi because i know that i've had a, had a look on your site and i know you have like an application process what does that look like how do how do, how do people go about um getting in touch and uh, getting involved or finding out more it's still very personal because um wild wi-fi is young it's only three years old and i I'm very much into get to know who's joining our adventure and I want to create the right vibe of community. And this is why I'm offering a call. And this call is actually um, the first step that you have to do before you book with us. So um, you're happy to, um, can, you, you can easily schedule a call with me on the website and then we meet and we have a 30 to 40 minutes talk. And this is a win-win situation for both because Coming to Africa is a big step for most of the people. This is all the misconceptions that we just talked about. I have to, I want to give people the confidence that it's safe, that you can come here. You are jumping right into a community. We take care of everything of your accommodation, your SIM card, your whatsoever. So um, I want to create, a, I want the people to have um, the, the, the best start into the Africa journey as possible and this starts with a call and it's not like you go to spain or to portugal this is a no-brainer you would do that without 
having some advice on a call with someone. But coming to Africa is different. So this is the first yeah, step. Yeah, that have makes a call perfect sense. Me. And it's good for you to get a better understanding the of, of the people. And so you get a full a full understanding of what they're coming into. And what what, what about your co-living itself? Because you were telling me you're, you're in a house at the moment. I, I can't remember exactly how it's set up. So, yeah, we have a new accommodation and finally a permanent one that I collaborate with. Because the past two years, we were switching accommodation. Uh, for each retreat, but it became a bit exhausting because you can't improve processes. You can't start renovating if it's not your own property or if you're not collaborating long term. And now I finally got this perfect collaboration with an uh, accommodation here in Windhoek. And this is a family run hotel, a cute little German couple. They're doing it already for 30 years. And they were super open to this new um, tourists uh, that are called digital nomads. And um, now I'm taking over most of their rooms and we have our fully private area for our co-living guests. And we are now building a self-catering kitchen, outdoor self-catering kitchen, because Namibia is always sunny. So you can have this amazing outdoor kitchen. We have uh, sheltered outdoor co-working areas. We have lounge areas, barbecue areas, a pool, and um, everyone has their private rooms with private bathrooms. And uh, they still have the, um, so they have on one side the ho- feeling homely because this is your new home but on the other side they have these hotel advantages like there's still a restaurant that you can use in our house and having a breakfast buffet or just order from the lunch menu you have laundry service and you have daily cleaning so it comes with um, the best of both sides it sounds lovely the i think one of the things that people don't realize and this is something that is because um, a lot of countries like Namibia, East Africa are very, very tourist heavy. I don't think people realize quite how expensive normal accommodation is and normal hotels are. We don't need to go into the costs of wild Wi-Fi because obviously those are, you can have, those are on your, your website, I think. But right. the, uh, I, I think people always under underestimate or don't understand this kind of strange situation where um, while Africa as a continent, the you know, GDP per capita is often quite low. The cost of provisioning hotels and holidays is actually reasonably high, even compared to some European standards. Um, you know, if I look around the local area where we are, you're looking at you know a few hundred dollars per night most places. Um, so, so I, I always think it's amazing that you can take somewhere like a hotel that's essentially a luxury hotel with a swimming pool and air conditioning and all the magic things, and then make it work for for people who are staying longer. So, I think that's really really cool. Yeah, it's on purpose um, getting it onto another level. Um, you could start with a backpackers vibe or hostel vibe. I mean, those are existing here, of course, but. Um, I know the needs of nomads are different. Um, and this is where I was super happy to jump into a collaboration with a hotel because we're, this is where standards are uh, naturally on the next level. And then we just do some tweaking um, to, to, to be catering for more nomad needs. And um, then I hope people appreciate that it, this, is, um, this is where you can feel home, but uh, we, it's still not the, the exception, uh, the, the expectation of having these the underdeveloped countries must be super, super cheap. Also, safari tours in Namibia. I mean, when I came here 13 years ago, this was my most expensive ex- holiday that I ever did in my life, a, a safari for 14 days. And it still is wow. always shocking me, but um, it's also the most amazing and memorable experience I ever had in my life. So. Yeah, I think I don't think people quite understand the the high demand and then the short supply. You know, you're going and staying in a safari lodge that has ten tents in the middle of a huge national park, and you've got the entire world who all all want to come and visit it. Um, so it's uh, yeah, there's a, a natural imbalance there that leads to some costs, but it's also just expensive. I think, like you were saying earlier, the the cost of importing things is just high. And uh, and that makes vehicles more expensive. It makes it makes some things a bit cheaper, some local produce a bit cheaper, but it makes a lot of the infrastructure that has to be created actually more expensive because it's because uh, these countries are less developed. There is a lot less demand for things, and and so it makes it more challenging. Um, 
just as we wrap up, what what are the kind of last things we want to men we should mention about Namibia that we haven't covered? Because I've I've asked the questions that I want to know, but is there anything that people people normally ask about or are interested about in Namibia? I think we covered a lot. Um, people usually ask about the Wi-Fi, of course, one of the first questions, um, and how they get around in Windhoek. I tell them there's easy transportation with Uber, which is called Leffe in Namibia. And people want to know what is in a walking distance. Uh, and this is what I find really amazing. Our new accommodation is in a five minutes walking distance to one of the most thriving streets that we have here in Windhoek with a lot of restaurants and coffee shops that dedicate workspace for digital nomads. So everyone is jumping on that uh, to, to cater for the future great tourists that stay here for longer. And we have live music there and live uh, and um, local markets. The street is just um, growing every year and just a five minutes walk from us. So it's always good to know what is in a walking distance from a place. And, um, and yeah, and then they are always surprised. We talked about it at the very beginning that it's on European time zone. So it's uh, the central European time zone. So the, the, the most amazing thing is you jump on a plane in Frankfurt, overnight flight, and 10 hours later, you're in Windhoek. And if you had a good sleep, you're not exhausted at all. And um, then within a 30 minutes uh, taxi drive or airport shuttle, you're already in the city. So the infrastructure is great. Everything is close by and accessible. And this is where people are surprised of also that this is an English speaking country. So for anyone who comes here, they can connect to the local culture because everyone here speaks English. And Namibia has 13 different ethnic groups with even more different languages and dialects. So if you come here, you can talk to the Hereros, to the Damara, to the Himba, uh, some of them or they, that are here in the main city, they can speak English and you easily learn about all these different cultures. It sounds like I need to, um, just based on this conversation, it sounds like I need to organize a trip there as well, because uh, it's a country that's on my visit list of places that I, that I want to visit. I really want to do this kind of big tour through through a lot of different countries and uh and namibia is definitely on that list when i when i get a few minutes free um if that happens it's always busy doing this stuff listen thank you so much for your time i really appreciate it and um if people want to get in touch with you um it's wild wi-fi um and uh we'll put the uh i'll share the links for the for the website and your instagram and uh, thank you so much for your time Thank you for having this interview with me and uh, yeah, have a great day. See you soon.